Hey everybody, this is Tyler aka Grand Lethal 16 coming at you with another interview. We've got Chris McGuire here at Crow NecoCon 2016. What's up, buttercups? <laughs> All right, so my first question for you, Kristen, yes. is how did you find yourself at Crow NecoCon this year? Um, I sent them an email and I was like, guys, I'm the bee's knees. You should have me out to your con. And then they were like, okay. <laughs> and that's how I got here. I'd love to see that email. Friend. I really would. <laughs> I mean, it was verbatim, but it's basically that's what it said, so. Humble to a fault. <laughs> Admirable. <laughs> All right, now that you've introduced yourself and explained how you got here. Um, so, I heard that you got in really early. So this has been like an all-day kind of thing? Oh, yeah. Well, I got in early. Like, and by early, I mean early in the morning. So it was like 2 o'clock Dallas time. Nice. Um, we had a some issues with our planes, so I got delayed twice, uh, so instead of getting here at like 8 o'clock last night, I got in at like 1 in the morning, whatever. <laughs> so it was good times. But then we went and had Denny's, and after that I was like really happy, so I was like, ah, oh, food's the best. What did you get? Um, I got the skillet, like the like sirloin steak skillet meal, and it was like still cooking, and I was like, no regrets, all it burns, no regrets! And today I can't taste anything. <laughs> but but it was worth it, right? I yes, mean, it was totally worth it. It was amazing. Getting food in your system two minutes earlier is always worth it. <laughs> always. It was, it was yes, absolutely it was worth the risk. Would do again. Awesome. <laughs> so when you choose what kind of cons you want to go to, what kinds of things affect your decision? Um, I usually just look to see if I've heard good things about the con before, and. Uh, I had I have a friend Natalie Hoover that's been to this convention and she said a lot of really nice things about it, um, so that's kind of what I, I look for to make sure it's got like a good, you know, reputation and has not disappointed. Like the staff here are so sweet and amazing, and my room is kicking. Like nice. I feel like a princess. Awesome. So. I actually met Natalie Hoover at SakuraCon a few months back. Oh yeah, she was the sweetest. She was, but she got sick. Yeah, I heard. Um, her and my friend Megan. I met Megan too, yeah. I, I, we, we interviewed, so here's what happened. The first day, um, I interviewed, I think, Kyle Haber, Ruben Langdon, and, one, and Chuck Hubert. Mm -hmm. And then the second day, I interviewed Megan, uh, Michael Salsuit, and someone else. I think it was Aaron Dismuk. Mm -hmm. And then Natalie was supposed to be Saturday, but she wasn't feeling good. And Megan was getting like special, I don't know, tea or something. I, you, you guys have all your little tricks of the trick. <laughs> we do, we do, and so yes. On. And she, she downed a few. Um, and then uh, Natalie got switched to Sunday, so the third day. And then Sunday comes along, like, no, she, no, no, she got to go yeah, back. Well, yeah, oh, yeah. She was got harsh. really sick. I don't kind of remember crazy. that. Um, but soccer conquered. They took good care of them. So oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Just, it happens. A lot of people. Yeah. 10,000 people. I mean, there's, there's always a risk. For sure. Oh, yeah. It's 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 a numbers game at that <laughs> point. <laughs> Do you have a favorite dish when you're in town? Uh, this is my first time here. I've never been to Washington before. Um, we went to Delish for lunch, and that was tasty. But I haven't, I haven't really tried anything local. So if you have suggestions, let me know. Well, if we were any further west, I'd say sushi. Oh, yeah. I, it's a long drive to Seattle, so I don't, know about, <laughs> I don't know about daily sushi deliveries or anything, so I can't, I can't quote on that. Um, but that's that's always a big one is sushi. When people come out here, steaks are good in town. Oh, I'm yeah? Heard, so, oh. I mean, but you're from Dallas, so I, we I say that very lightly. We do a pretty good you know, steak in Texas. We know how very, to cook meat. <laughs> you know, maybe it's good. I don't know. I don't know. I'll let you know. I'll come All back right. like, whoa. All right. I'll you know, be like, so how, how was the barbecue? How was the steak? I mean, you know. All right, and then let's see. Oh, so when you start out in the voiceover industry, mm -hmm. did you ever envision this level of success? Uh, I mean, define success. <laughs> um, no, I am actually, I feel very gracious. I uh, never imagined that I would even go into voice acting. I did theater in high school, and I liked it, but at no point was I like, this is going to be a career. Uh, I wanted to do comics and art. Like, that was my love. Um, but when I started guesting at conventions as an artist guest, I started meeting voice actors, and I was like, I, I miss theater, and I miss acting. Maybe I'll try to get into voice acting. And so I signed up to do open auditions, and uh, that was like five months later I heard back and went in for open auditions, and now Funimation can't get rid of me. Nice. Um, but Joel was my hiring director. He's amazing. Um, but with broadcast dubs, it's really opened up so much for us local actors because 
you know, you have to be available for, you know, 12 weeks or with this assassination classroom it was 22 weeks. And as an actor to be told like, hey, you're gonna have work for 22 weeks, you're like, best news ever! Oh yeah! Like, this is amazing! I can't believe I'm gonna have work for 22 straight weeks! That's like, awesome! Let me call my mom! Oh. Um, so, you know, in that regards, Broadcast Dubs has really pushed, I think, my level of success, I say that lightly, uh, my level of success to, to where it is now, and that's all thanks to Broadcast Dubs. So. Just to clarify, I'm just only going to knucklehead here. When you say broadcast dubs, do you just mean localization? No, um, Funimation has the broadcast dub initiative, meaning we're dubbing anime like three to four episodes behind when it's airing in Japan. So, so, uh, like so a staggered simulcast almost. Yeah, it's almost um, like Space Dandy was a simulcast because it simulcast at the same time so. um, as it did in Japan, which is really, really cool. Um, but broadcast dubs, so basically instead of waiting for the whole series to come out and then maybe a year from now, you know, we'll release it on DVD, we release it on Funimation.com like four weeks after it's aired in Japan. So like Assassination Classroom is one and it's Prison irrelevant. School and yeah, it's real while it's still fresh and fans are still excited about it, we, you know, we're getting to go ahead and dub it like right now and it just helps with the hype, I feel like, and fans get their anime sooner. So if they're, you know, if they're into dubs. So that's what a broadcast dub is. Okay. The only thing is, is we don't know how big your characters are going to be, so you know you may get a message saying like, "Hey, can you come in tomorrow uh, to record for an hour or for 30 minutes or or whatever it is?" And so they have to use local actors because you know there may not be time to book a flight out to you know to get them to the studio if they're LA based or Houston based. Do you ever um, record from home and send it in? Not for Funimation, although I have for games. Um, there's a game coming out called 88 Heroes, and I recorded all that at home. Uh, you'll be able to buy it on Steam August 8th, and I play seven or eight August different 8? characters. August 8th is coming up because it's 88. Nice! 88 heroes, 88 levels, 88 seconds per level. Whoa! Yes, it's all 88. Um, I think I have to stream that on Twitch. You that should do insane. it! Yes, you should totally do it. And I play six or seven of the characters in it, or eight. I, it was quite a few. And it's like 16-bit, like retro kind of oh, animation. Yeah. There we go. And when we die, we like explode into pixels. So we got to make these really like cool like bleh! sounds like oh, when man. we die. So all that was recorded from home. That's awesome. It's it's kind of the reason I asked about the recording is um, from home is Megan says that she she goes into her closet, you know, surrounded by clothes, and we'll take her mic in there. We do that a lot for like indie games and things like that. Um, but for Funimation, we go to the studio. And thankfully, there are now quite a few studios in Dallas that you can go and record at, so you don't have to do that. It's to me, I always prefer to be in the studio because it's oh, yeah. professional equipment, of course. and I too have a recording closet. Nice. So. Do you put a sign up? Um, I recording don't. In progress or I don't. It's closet time. But like, I have I live in an apartment, so like, it never fails that when I am recording, that's when someone's gonna come down the stairs like right outside my apartment. It's like, bum 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 bum. I try to do a portion of a Let's Play, and that's when my dog decides that there's someone outside. Oh, and he has to. yeah, he never fails. Oh, my headset. Uh, I'm gonna uh, take the headset off for a minute. I'll be back in like a minute. Hey, and, you know, and I'll take the controller so I can keep pushing through dialogue while I grab in my career. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I have a Labrador, so when she barks, it's pretty noticeable. I have Maltese, so, oh. so it's a little workable. It's a little bit. You know, I just scoop them up and throw them in a room and close yeah, the door. I can't like quick. scoop my dog. I'm like, that's, that's a back work. You know, <laughs> Dog might not like it. Yeah. <laughs> well, she wouldn't mind. She's just like a big puddle, but it's sixty-three pound puddle. Oh, Christ. <laughs> What's the easiest role you've ever voiced? Uh, the easiest. Uh, it just flowed. Minimal, minimal prep. Probably in Divine Gate, I play a character called. We just call her the Defier Girl. Um, she didn't have a name that we were aware of. Um, she's in. She's critical to the episode, but she's just my voice, mm -hmm. and she's also the most complex character I've played, but I had been taking so many acting lessons at this point that I actually was able to slip into it without even really thinking about it. So it just flowed. Yeah, and it was some of my best acting, and I was just really, really proud of it. And and then, uh, spoiler alert, she dies, um, and we hadn't recorded the dying scene yet, it was split into two sessions, and I lost my voice in between the two sessions. And so I go in Monday, and like my voice is like really croaky, and I was like, "We're just dying today, right? Awesome! Let's. This is gonna work for us." 
So we went in there, and so if she sounds like she's really dying, it's because I had like half a voice. We're wondering. And about we're like, let's then. just make it work. <laughs> so uh, it worked out that way. So she's one of the best characters. I feel like she was really natural, and I know it's always easier when you don't have to pitch your voice for a character. Of course, of course. Um, and then, what was the most difficult role you ever had? Oh, um, uh -oh. probably electrocuting from Eighty Eight Heroes because. Electro Kitty is a little tall, but when she gets mad, she turns into a demon! And you have to switch like flawlessly between be those two and use like this demon voice for her. So it's like you're pitching her voice up when she's little and cute and then like... And you've got to do it quickly so they don't have to record two and then put two pieces yes, together. Yes, so she was probably the most difficult and I did quite a few takes to get just the right sound on her. Is that one of those ones you, you like wake up or you have a nightmare about? You're like, oh. <laughs> no, I haven't had any um, nightmares about anything again. I've done. <laughs> when I got cast in Assassination Classroom, I was so excited uh, because it was my first named role that I woke up like the first night in the middle of the night and was worried I dreamed it all. <laughs> and I woke up and I was like, oh no, I didn't really get cast. And I was like, no wait, yes I did. <laughs> You're checking your email, did that really happen? <laughs> I was like, whoa, that was awesome. So you mentioned that um, on the on the character one back. I'm sorry, you said the Divine Gate. What was her name again? I'm sorry. The Defire Girl Defire is what Girl. we call her. Bingo. Um, that your voice was was not doing so hot the second day. Mm -hmm. Do you have like any go-to stuff? I mean, it's not water. Is it lemon and honey and water? I mean, I've heard there's all kinds. There's of, all kinds of things you can do. Um, lozenges. Steam is steam. really good for your voice. Um, so like you can boil a pot of water and just kind of like lean over the pot of water and like inhale the steam, yes! <laughs> or take a really hot shower and uh, just like kind of stand out of the water and just like absorb the steam. Hot tea uh, is great. Uh, lots of water, because usually if your throat is suffering it's because of dehydration. So you have to drink a lot of water. Um, but even then, like it's all in moderation, like too much tea can be bad. And, uh, but don't ever use cough drops, like no, the no menthol lodges, is no, bad no. for you. That makes sense. I never yeah. thought about that. It's for your vocal cords. I mean, it's not if you're like actually trying to avoid a cough, but it's not great for your actual vocal cords. Michael Tatum told me that, so it must be true. He's a smart dude. <laughs> he would know. Oh, yeah. Uh, let's see. Is there any particular method acting or way you get into a role? Um, this is going to sound really... Don't you guys have those little paragraphs? The director gives them to you five to ten minutes before and says, here's your character. No, we don't even get that. It's cold what? reading. Um, I mean, if you watch the episode, you may know what's going on. If you, you know, watched ahead. If I like to, and this is probably really silly, um, but if I'm playing a character that I feel is, like, really cute, I will dress really cute to, like, channel my cuteness. Like, I'll wear a skirt or whatever. Uh, the first time I recorded Chio in prison school, Chio's like really sweet and really genuine, and just all the boys think she's the cutest girl in the class. <laughs> and so I wore like a skirt uh, to my first recording session so that I could like channel. She kind of be forced to like fit into. Yeah, to channel my inner Chio. But a lot of it just comes from I, I take weekly acting lessons, and so a lot of it is now to where I just kind of fall right into it, and it's not as much work as it used to be. You've got like an envisioned like archetype, and you can just go there. Yes, um, and after a while you, you find that certain voices fit certain characters, like Hinano and Chio are both pitched up a little bit and they sound really sweet because they are. Um, and then like the spunkier characters like have this voice and boys like, boys are from your throat and they usually just like really boy it up in the booth <laughs> and look really inappropriate. <laughs> no worries, I mean, again if you have that impression, I mean, if you're giving it off that's fine. <laughs> I, I suppose. So that's how I do it. I'm sure it's different for everybody though. That's cool. Do you have a really notable random con experience? You've gone to cons for a while now. You've got to have something that's I just crazy. I do. I do. Um, I have the best story. When I was going to Acon earlier this year, mm -hmm. uh, they called Uber to come pick me up so I wouldn't have to drive. And I was all about it. I was like, yeah, I hate driving that's in awesome. downtown Dallas. So I'm waiting and I'm waiting and I'm waiting and like Uber just never shows up. And so I was like, guys, Uber never showed up. And they're like, oh, we're so sorry. We're sending a cab to get you. So the cab gets there and uh, it, the guy looked Asian. So I was like, so I was like, where? And he had a really thick accent. So I was like, where are you from? And he's like, 
Carrollton, which is like in Dallas. And I was like, oh, cool. I used to work near there. And uh, you have a follow up, but you're, you're uh, debating but like, on that but one. Like, but I don't, you don't, what? I don't want to be like inappropriate, but your accent is really thick. And, and then he follows up. He's like, but originally I'm from Lao. And I was okay, like, yeah. okay, cool. I was like, I've never heard of Lao. And he was like, Lao is where they fought the secret war. And I was like, I've never heard of that war before. And so he takes out a notebook while driving and puts this notebook on the steering wheel. And he's like, I will tell you about the secret war. He starts, war. Like, drawing a map. And he starts drawing a map while oh, no. driving. And I was like, oh my God. I was like, this is awful. This is an awful experience. And he's like, this is Vietnam. And this is Lao, and this is the, the Ho Chi Minh Trail. Did you see how it goes into Lao? That's where the war was fought, but nobody talks about it. It's a secret war. It's a secret. And he's like looking at me and like drawing this map. And, and you're like watching the road and praying. And I'm like, oh my god, I'm gonna <laughs> die. And I, I was like, this is awful. But then I thought, this is hilarious. This is actually really hilarious. I should be live tweeting this cab trip. But then I thought, if I tweet about the secret war, is Skype he in danger? Am I in danger? Oh, like, is the Laois government gonna come get us? Like, is the dark gonna come through the window well, now and I'm get part us? Of it too, so, <laughs> now oh, everyone's a part We're of the secret war. We're all implicated, aren't we? <laughs> and and I was like, oh my god, this is this is so funny. But I, I want to tweet about it, but I don't want to get I don't want to get him in trouble. Involved. You know, I don't want to get involved in the secret war. And and then he looks at me and he's driving and he goes, I would never lie to you. I would never lie to you if I told you something that's the truth. And I was like, I believe you, Con, for that was his name. And I was like, I believe you, Con. And he was like, I'm going to tell you something. And I'm like, what is it? And he goes, Mobile 20 oil is the best oil to use on your car. He's an Uber driver. And I was Cap, like, I, him. I trust you because you obviously use your car all the time. And if you say mobile 20 is where it's at, I believe you. And he's like, do you see this? And that was this thing. Like, he kept wanting me to look at things in the front seat. And I was like, no, I can't see it. I'm in the back seat. And he was like, this has this many thousands of miles on it. And I was like, that's amazing. that Because you can't tell. He's like, this, shh, listen. And I'm like, I don't hear anything. He goes, exactly. exactly. Oh, no. <laughs> he's like, exactly. And he goes, oh, no. And he starts looking at his phone. He's like, no, 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 no. And I'm like, what is it, Con? What is it? And he goes, do you see this? And I'm like, once again, I'm like, no, I don't see it. And he's like, look at it. And so I'm like, okay. I, I, I see it. And he's like, do you see this? And I'm like, yeah. And he's like, that's red. And I'm like, I'm aware. And he's like, that means we're in traffic. And I look around and I'm like, I can see that. <laughs> and he's like, but it's about to get worse. He goes, see this? This means it's stopped. It's just completely stopped. And I'm like, con. What are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? Like, how are we gonna get out of this? And he's like, I'll take the 635 exit. And so I was like, cool, Con, I trust you to get us there. He's already got a solution. <laughs> so we get there, and by the time I have, now I've spent almost an hour in the cab with this guy. We get there, and I'm like, have a great vacation across the United States, Con. Like, I know all about his kids what kind of oil he uses, the secret war in Laos. Oh my goodness. And he gives me his number, and he's like, if you ever need a ride, Oh. And I was like, I will. Did and you the, tweet that? That would have been brilliant. The convention continues. I told the staff about it. So all weekend long, hashtag secret war was like trending within the convention. Oh, no. And mobile 20. And uh, at the end of the con, one of the staff members was like, I have to have a ride to the airport. And they're like, what do you mean you have to? It's very demanding. And I was like, guys. I'm gonna call con. Call con. <laughs> we gotta call con. Did you get a picture of him? So you just like put that under like, <laughs> make a I meme? didn't, but it was one of those things like this could be really bad or it could be a really entertaining story about the secret war in Laos. I'm gonna have to Wikipedia that. Have you ever looked it up? <laughs> have you found anything like that? I, you know what? I haven't. I should. I need to know. But con says I can trust him. So maybe you know, it's better that way. He would never lie to me. Never. He never. said that. So I believe him. Cabbies, the the, uh, the epitome of honesty. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. Here's my next question. Sorry. On the note of friends, family, and fans, how have they impacted your career up until now, both on the art side and the voiceover side? Um. Well, my dad's always been like really, really supportive of me. Um. He's a really cool dude. You know, I told him I was like, Dad, I got cast in this new show, and it's 
But the girl likes sumo and it's about prison and it's practically porn. And he's like, I'm so proud of you. And I'm like, thanks, Dad. So my dad's really Dad awesome. <laughs> nice. Um, and of course, like fans of, you know, I, we have the greatest, you know, fans and support base. Like they're all just so mm -hmm. wonderful and nice and supportive. And, you know, today they announced um, the Love Life dub and there have been people tweeting about it all day because uh, I'm doing the writing for it. And, They've just been really supportive, and they're like, "Oh, I just know that you're going to do a great job since you're writing this." And I mean, they're just really supportive. And I guess when you've got that kind of, you know, system around you, like it definitely makes you feel like you can achieve more and that you're doing a good job. So. Excellent. Where do you see yourself in five years? And then the second end of this, if there was a role you'd have to complete by five years to be totally good to leave the industry, what would it be? So. Oh no. Um. Well, I've, I've never really played a lead role before, um, so I would love, of course I would love to play a lead in a show. I mean, Shio was a pretty big part of, of prison school, um, but it was more centered around the men in the show. So I'd love to play lead. Maybe a magical girl. I nice. think that would be great. Or a cat girl. Like, I love cat girls. Um, and in five years, I, I mean, I just want to be doing more video games. Um, Get into a fighting game and RPG. Oh yeah, I just well, I love RPGs. Like Single if I could a do game, Rune yes. Factory or Fire Emblem, like any of those games. Fire Emblem doesn't go anywhere. There'll be there'll be oh, another one for sure. I love sure. Fire Emblem so much. I would love to voice act for that. So I really just want to expand to more genres, and um, I don't want to limit myself to just anime when it comes to, to voice acting. Um, maybe get into directing at some point. I don't think I'm ready now, but it's something I would like to pursue in the future. And you have to plan, right? If you don't plan, you know, then it may not happen. So at that least you know, true. you envisioned Five it. years ago, I wasn't even voice acting, so who knows what would happen in five more. I know. Hey, remember this. You know, we, <laughs> we asked. Do you have any words to say to your fans who, who couldn't make it out here this weekend? Um, well, I'm sorry you guys couldn't make it out here if you wanted to make it out here. Um, maybe I'll see you again next year. Okay. <laughs> um, of course... Follow me on Twitter and Facebook and all that jazz. Um, I'm pretty interactive on those things, so I love talking to people. Um, and maybe I'll make it back out to Seattle again, like Seattle, Washington area. So I'd love to make the soccer con. I've heard great things. It's very rainy on that side. I Is it? That side. There's a lot of rain over there. Mm, I don't know how I feel about rain. We have 364 days of rain. And one day like this, I mean, <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. I don't know how I feel about that at all. <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. It would be great. So um, if you couldn't make it, I'm sorry. But maybe I'll get to come back and see you another time. All right. Thank you so much All for right. taking the time That's to sit no down problem. and chat with me. Yeah, it's been great. Hi, Chio here. I really hope to see more of you soon. Thank you.